Good day, everybody. Whew. Been one hell of a week, hasn't it? Similar to his the way he handled himself in the debates, it seems like Donald Trump is very much a... He has a lot of intensity at the start. And I hope that he... You know, it's like... I, I, one, one, I think a lot of people on the left in the back of their mind hope he's like he was in the debate, and it's like he's intense at the start, and then he's going to peter out a little bit. You know, as he runs out of things to to do, he's like, like it was that debate. I don't know if you remember it, where um, like he was with Hillary Clinton, and he basically that first like section of like the first like five minutes of the of the thing was, it was like everyone was like, oh my god, it's this Trump guy is knocking it out of the park, and then after like the first fifteen minutes, he started huffing and puffing and going, <sighs> and started seeming tired and kind of got things. But that's the past. This is the present, and. So, I guess this video, I wanted to ask a simple question, and, and it's, a, it's a very simple question. I'm going to be flashing some cards here to kind of back up what I'm saying here, um, as far as his obsession with this one topic here, and that is this, and, and this, this video mostly goes out to the religious people who voted for Donald Trump, the people who were Christian um, who voted for Donald Trump? Um, I do have a question to ask, and and I'm not gonna like I don't I don't I hate people who demean people for their religious beliefs. I really do. Um, I I'm somewhat a religious man myself. I'm still theistic, um, despite the fandom that I come from being half you know half secular and half you know religious in some degree. But only really 25% Christians. So we really, like, Christians in the furry community are a minority. So we can, but, you know, we still are treated, I think we're still treated as people in the fandom. And I, and I applaud the fandom for that. And I think it's very nice. Um, I do know some Christian folks within the fandom. And, and they're very nice folks. So... Let me talk, but let me ask this question, because as a Christian man myself, I'm having trouble trying to wrap my head around something, and that, like, a lot of Christian folks do like this Donald Trump guy, and they still like him, despite every, like, all the decisions he made in the past week. But the one thing that I keep going back to in the back of my head, and the question that keeps rising to me is, like, if you're a, if you're a man of God, all right, if you're a man of God, if you're, if you're on a mission from God, as like the Blues Brothers would say. What do the numbers of the people, of the mortal men who follow you matter? And I ask that question because this past week, we've seen a man obsessed, a man driven by, like, my crowd size was the biggest crowd size in the inauguration. In inauguration history, it's bigger than Obama's. They're lying, they're obscuring the views. They, they, and every time the media goes, well, no, here are the pictures of the two events. Yours was clearly smaller. And he's like, no, 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 you guys are lying. And, and like he spent, I would say, on total, a total of like five hours-ish between him and his press secretary and everyone else. And, I'll, and as you saw, the cards are kind of flipping up here to show you this is what is going on. He's obsessing over something very trivial. If you're a man of God, the people following you is trivial, right? Like, Jesus did, like, can you imagine? Can you imagine? At the Last Supper, Jesus sits down there, looks to his four apostles and goes, You know what, guys? I'm just not feeling it. The crowd here is not big enough. We need more apostles. Bring in, bring in some more people. We need, we need more people. I need more people in here. We, we need more people. I need more people to break bread with. I can't stand having a smaller crowd size than the Roman than the Roman rulership. I mean, what the heck? I'm the son of God, man. Get the people in here. He didn't care. He didn't care. Like Jesus had 12 followers. Yet the impact he had, he has had on the world and the and just everything. Whether you believe he's the son of God or not has been ex Dream. Everyone tries to, and this is like all these, all these mortal men in power try to emulate this guy. Like they try, they try to get, they try to stir, you know, the feeling, the same, 
you know, hope and desires and, 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 and inspiration that this one person had, and they can't do it. And, and they cling to their numbers like it's some, like, and we as a society have done this. We as a society, and it's not just Donald Trump. We, we, we look at Donald Trump and say, hey, he's looking at his numbers. <laughs> look at this man obsessing with his crowd sizes. He must have a small penis. Sorry to say, be so blunt, but that's what people, that's what people on the left are saying. Here's the thing, go. We're on YouTube. Click the like, click the subscribe button. I want more followers. Give me more subscribers. We, we've done this to ourselves as well. We, it's like, we like to think that Trump, like, and this is kind of a non-sequester, I guess, but it's kind of a, it, it just came to my mind as I was talking about it. It's like, we as a society have kind of created this guy. Like, we're obsessed with our numbers. We're obsessed with the followers. We're obsessed with the likes, the prestige, everything. And yet we, we go, why the heck did this guy become president who's obsessed with the numbers all the time and, and how big his crowd sizes are? Look at the world around us. How much ad revenue are we making? How much, how, what are the numbers we're bringing in? It's like, it's crazy. It's freaking crazy. But... Why would we vote for something like that? This is the kind of part of society that we shouldn't be applauding. It's not something that we should be looking for. We should be looking for good in people. You know what I mean? It's like, why? It's like... Like, we feared that the other side was more evil or something. I don't know. Like, it's it's silly. But I guess you did the decision you made. But I guess the simple question was... And I'll go back to that simple question because I kind of went off on a tangent as I normally do. You'll have to forgive me. But, like, if, if Trump really believes that he's doing what he's doing for God and for, and for the good of people, then what would he care about his crowd sizes? Why would he care about how many people loved and respected him or did this... Let me go on another kind of non-sequester, but it sort of has to do with this topic. I know that Donald Trump's crowd sizes were not as big as Obama's. And I knew they weren't going to be as big as Obama's even before it happened. And here's why, all right? The reason that this happens, okay, is that you could go back to history. I didn't look up the numbers before this video, so... If I'm wrong, you guys are going to tell me in the comment section, right? You guys are going to do it. I know you're going to do it. You're going to look this up. So if you're a Republican president and you're talking in Washington, D.C., in any speech, if you had a Democrat of that same person, you're going to have a larger crowd size if you're a Democrat, and I don't care which Democrat you are. I know this because I've studied politics for a bit when I was, you know, was a kid, and I keep up with this stuff, even, even in its hardest moments. The issue here is that Washington, D.C. is 97% Democrat, all right? If a, it's, you have a home team advantage if you are a Democrat making a speech there, all right? Like, you don't, are people going to come out and see the guy that they voted against in an auger speech? No. They're not going to do that. They're not, it's like, hey, you know that guy we didn't vote for? He, he's having a speech down the street. You want to go see it? Nah. But if you have the guy said, hey, that guy we voted for won, and he's just down the street giving a speech, you want to go see it? Yeah, like, yes. It's that simple. It, the numbers are that simple. And that's the way that they could have explained this just as easily in two seconds. I just did it in five minutes. I did it in five freaking minutes. I said, this is why Donald Trump didn't have the numbers. It doesn't mean he doesn't have supporters. It doesn't mean he doesn't have the people, like he doesn't have people behind him. It's just they're not locals, all right? If you're a Republican president, you have to understand that going into that. That city, Washington, D.C., is not your town. That is not your hometown. Your hometown's in Texas. Your hometown's in Wyoming. Your hometown's in upstate New York. Somewhere, but it's not there. You know what I mean? It's it's more rural. You you have some you know you, you look at the simpler things in life, and that's good on you. You know, but that same at the same time. You know when Donald Trump and I and I clicked on one of the cards above there that you you see, during one of his interviews, you know goes to the newscaster and he 
and he starts dragging the guy around to all these pictures in the, in the White House that he took of his inauguration crowd size. He's that obsessed with it. I, I guess they have the size of, like, they have pictures of all the inaugural crowds in there or something, maybe. So maybe it's not, like, a, like, so maybe it's not really him obsessing over it. Maybe it's just kind of a thing that's on a wall somewhere. Um, but he shows it. He shows him a picture. And he goes, these are the forgotten people. These are the people that they, they're forgotten. I'm not going to forget them. And, but the thing is, that, like, the people who showed up at the inauguration... The, the Republicans who showed up on the inauguration are pretty well-off Republicans. They're people who can enjoy a time off from work, who make enough um, to do this. There was a famous, um, there was a famous and awesome like news story about like one Republican um, who went to see Donald Trump from Texas, you know, tipping an African American waitress four hundred fifty dollars after they kind of had political discussions and were like, you know, they talked about their history and stuff like that and like. The history of the diner that they that they were doing and it was kind of an awesome story if i could find a link to it i'll you know put a link to it um but he left a 450 dollar tip for her and he's like well that's nice that's generous that's what we need and that's what we've needed this whole time before you know you know trump made you know, before our politics made us afraid of one another you know what i mean this that's what we need all the time not just when it's like like, oh gosh, I'm sorry for the guy I voted for because he's kind of, he seems kind of brash. You know what I mean? We need that kind of humanity all the time. But <clears throat> that being said, and that being put aside, um, back to the thing. So he's like, these are the forgotten folks. And I'm going to say to you, it's sort of a slap to the face to the people who didn't show up. It's sort of this kind of passive aggressive thing. It's like, the people who showed up at my inauguration speech are the important ones. Everyone else is... Pfft. And you know who everyone else is as well? People who live in, like, you know, lower class trailer parks. Pe or trailer parks. People who, you know, people who live on farms and stuff like that and can't really afford to leave. You know, can't really afford to go on a train or get on a plane and go to Washington, D.C., which is a pretty expensive city because they, they, the minimum wage isn't as high in their state as it is in, in Washington, D.C. area, and, and the cost of living in Washington, D.C. is a lot higher. Like, there's a lot of people who did vote for you, and they were tired of the fact that they couldn't afford to do the things that they dreamed about doing, and you just snubbed them one more time. You know, it, in my mind, it felt like a snub. It's like, what if these guys wanted to see you? What if these guys wanted to be in the crowd? Though, to me, those are the forgotten ones. The forgotten ones are the ones who couldn't afford to show up to your inauguration speech. The ones who could afford to go to your inauguration speech, you know, certainly, you know, they felt forgotten in the politics of the past eight years, maybe. But they could afford and could be with you. And so they certainly, you know, aren't forgotten in the fact that they're pretty. They're doing pretty well for themselves if they can afford to go to Washington and do that thing. The forgotten ones are the ones who can't. The, for, the forgotten ones are the ones who, you know, worry about affording the day to day, who are living paycheck to paycheck. And and I hope, you know, and I pray, even, that in the coming days, that those forgotten ones, and even the ones who were vets in the past and and have been snubbed, that those forgotten ones are the ones who are remembered and the ones who are you know who are who we look out for you know what i mean and i guess that's of, of everything in the week that happened and a lot of stuff happened during the week uh that's the one thing i wanted to discuss and talk about and so i guess i guess the question i'll end, end with the question i started with and that is trump says that he's working for the force of good, that he's working for God. But the question is, is that why would immortal men who claims that they work for God concern themselves with something as fleeting and mortal as the size of the crowds in which they draw? For only one person, they should only hope that one person shows up and shines their light onto what they say and what they do. That's the only, and that one, one person and one, you know, one creator, that's the only person they should hope is has the wind at their sails. 
Because at the end of the day, crowd size is just crowd size. A man with 12 apostles can change the world forever after his demise, after his body leaves this plane. But, you know, and same, likewise, we as human beings have the capacity of changing the world even beyond our death. But you can't do it if you're obsessed with the amount of people like you in the mortal world. Because that will be an anchor that holds you back from doing the right thing. You know what I mean? It'll, it'll hold you back. It'll prevent you from doing the right thing if you're worried about how everyone will perceive it. You know what I mean? That's just my thoughts on that question. But um, feel free to leave your answers below. This is kind of a dark topic, wasn't it? Uh, I'll try to try to keep my pieces more fluffy from here from every once in a while but I think talking about the world around us is important because if we don't talk about the world around us the world around us is gonna talk anyway you know what I mean that's that's the world that's how it works so let me know what you think feel free to leave your hate your love whatever kick a like kick a subscribe kick a comment I'm going to get the hop out of here. Uh, thank you very much for watching this long video. And I hope, uh, I hope we stay strong as, as people and we always stay strong as people and stay resolved in our beliefs and in, in the belief of doing good for one another. May, us, may, may, we, may we do that. Thank you very much for watching.